Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily add font awesome icons throughout your entire website. The good news is you can use this technique to add icons to places like your main menu systems and different Elementor widgets. Now to follow this tutorial, I do recommend you have Elementor Pro and I do have an affiliate link in the description below if you'd like to support this channel. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I was able to add these custom icons in front of your toggle titles. And I'll also throw in an icon at the main menu and just show you some other widgets and ways that you can integrate these icons throughout your website. The first thing you need to make sure that you have active on your website is this option right here. So if you go under Elementor settings, uh, you're going to want to make sure you have this toggle to yes. Uh, this is going to load the Font Awesome 4 support. Um, so the way it works is these icons on this website I'll be showing you are the Font Awesome 4. And so enable to make this work, you need to have that option on. So for some reason, these icons aren't showing up uh, on the front end. It's because you don't have this option enabled. So to get started, we're going to need to grab the HTML code for these Font Awesome icons. And this website right here, which I'll link in the description below, is going to give us the code we need to be able to add it to the website. So what I recommend is on the left panel here, make sure you click this button free because they do have some pro ones. But in this example, let's just cover the free ones. And we'll just be toggling between solid, we have regular, and the brands. These are the ones that are going to work with the Elementor website. So let's jump into the back end of an Elementor page. And I'm going to show you how you can add this to certain uh, Elementor widgets. So in this example, this is a simple tabs widget. So I just pulled that in. And by default, uh, I will remove these. By default, there's no way to add any sort of icons to the tabs here. Um, I wish they had that option, but they currently don't. So what we're going to have to do is add that little HTML code I just deleted. And I'm going to show you how you can even make further customizations to each one of those if you like. So let's go ahead and just select some random icons and just throw them in there. So let's say we wanted to have um, this one right here, Audible, for some reason. So what you do is you click on any of those icons that you'd like. And this right here is the HTML code that we're going to need to be able to copy. So you just click that button right there and it copies it to your clipboard. Head back over into your Elementor page. And anywhere you would like that icon to appear, you can just type it in right here. You just paste it in and there you go. It's as simple as that. So if we head over into the styling, you could see under typography, if you start to scale up uh, the titles, it will scale up the icon as well. So now let's head back over to the website and just grab another random icon, copy this one. And same technique, you just head on over into your tabs and just paste that right in just like that. And the good thing is, is that you can add, add a space. So if you hit space right afterwards, you could see that it will actually add a space. So if you would like to be able to add additional spaces in between your icons and the title, uh, what you're going to need to do is add in this little HTML code as well. It's a non-spacing break. So as you can see, if I just keep pushing, if I just keep pasting in a bunch of these, it will put a little space in between each one. So each time I do it, it's going to add a little tiny space right here. So depending on your use case, you may need that. And the good thing is you can throw that anywhere. So if for some reason you want to push a space in front of here, you can do that. You can remove these spaces. So now let's hit update and test the page on the front end to make sure everything is working correctly. So if I go back here, hit enter, and there you go. It's working on the front end correctly. Now let's go ahead and this is a normal WordPress uh, menu system here. So let's just go ahead and I'll show you how it's very simple. You just paste that code into your menu systems and it will work as well. So if we just go under appearance menus, and if I jump over to primary, let's say I want to add an icon in front of the word portfolio. You can just add that right there, hit save menu and that's it. So now if I go back to the front end, you see it has the AWS icon and then the name of the menu item. Now the way it works with WordPress is you're going to have to add that little HTML code to add the spaces in here uh, if you want any sort of spacing. So let's just say we want to have um, a double space. You would just add two of those, hit save, and now there should be a nice little gap here when I hit refresh. And there you go. So that's how you can add it to different elements on WordPress. And so if I just go into here and just another example, let's say I have a header. I can add 
that code into here as well. Oop, let me copy this, this code right here. So now you can see I could just add in that same code and it works just as well, just like a tab system here. So pretty much anywhere that there's an area where you can add simple HTML code, you're gonna be able to add these fun, awesome icons throughout your entire website. So add it to, like I said, to your menus, a lot of widgets and Elementor are supported if you have stuff in your footer. So this is a really cool way to do it without having to do you know custom CSS inlines and all that complicated stuff. This is a really simple way to do it. And as you can see right here, there are 1600, yeah, 1,609 different icons to choose from. So that's what's good about the system is Elementor is already loading this up on your website. So you have access to 1,600 icons uh, really simply. You just copy that HTML code and you paste it in there. Now I'm going to jump into a little more advanced CSS stuff if you want to be able to customize these things even further. So as you can see by default on this tab system, whatever color you have in your title here is going to carry over into the color of your icon. So there's probably cases where you want the title and the icon to be a different color. To do that, you're gonna to have to have a little bit of custom CSS, but it's very simple. I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. So if you go under title here, you could see if I start changing the colors here, it's gonna change the icon. So you can kind of visually see what's happening here. So let's just put this back to like a blue color. And let's say we wanna have that at like a black color. And to do that, what you need to do is head back over into this code and if you could see right here, this FAB, you're just gonna to wanna to copy that. So that's a class name. And depending on which font you use over here between solid, regular, and brands, this class might be a little bit different. So if I go into the advanced CSS here, so if I go under here, advanced, custom CSS, if I just add that class and just type in color, and I just have a hex color of like a black, there you go. You can see that it has changed that to black and this to blue. So changing the CSS code here is really helpful if you need to have it different from your title colors. Now let's go ahead and add in a different one and I'm gonna show you how you can combine the different classes from Font Awesome to make them the same color. So let me grab a different icon with a different uh, CSS class so I can show you how to do that. So let's say I just wanna grab this building and you can see right here the class is FAR instead of FAB. So if I go back into the page and let's add it to the second one right here. So if I add this. So as you can see, the building is sticking to the color of the title here. It's not taking that color in. So what we need to do is add that into the custom CSS as well. And so if I go down to custom CSS, if you just add a comma dot FAR, there you go. So now any classes called .fab or .far is automatically gonna get this color right here. So I'll just hit update here and let's make sure that that works correctly on the front end. Yep, and that looks good to me. So one problem you can see is by doing that, it's automatically adding that to all different icons throughout the website. So let's say we wanna just target this widget. You can easily do that inside the customizer right here. So you just type in the word selector. And what that's gonna do is, it's only going to select these classes within this widget. So let me hit update, refresh here, and there you go. So let me go into here and change this color to something different so you can see that it's not the same color. Let me go and make that red. I'll hit update, and you can see if I hit refresh here, that's red, this is black. And so if I go back into here, so you can visually see, if I remove that word selector, it's gonna add the black to that icon right here. So if I hit refresh, you can see right here. That's happening because I didn't target the CSS classes to just this widget. So you may have use cases where that's fine, you can have the same color, but I just wanted to show you that within Elementor, you can just target a certain widget if you want. So if I hit update, it should go back to the red right here, you can see. So same process in the menu system. If you go into your menu system here, and as you can see, I just have the Elementor nav menu widget. If I just go into here, add the same thing, selector, that class name was fab, which was right here, F-A-B. 
and then I just made it color blue, hit update, and same process. So this one up here is gonna be blue, that didn't change, and then these we targeted right here. So as you can see, by doing the CSS, you have a lot of control over what you can do with it. And you're not just limited to changing the color. If for some reason you need that to be offset or a different size, you could go into here and type in something like uh, font size uh, 40 pixels. Um, you can't really see that, but let me go like 60. So you can see right here, you can target it to be whatever size you want with CSS. And that's it for this video. I hope that this was helpful. Let me know if you were able to use this on your website and how it turned out for you. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new Elementor videos like this. Thanks, this is Mark from Wiki Design.